Let's get it. Hop off a 16 passenger. This a G5. No, this not a challenger. Big one. I keep some members with me in the fridge. The coat seats. They some cannibals. Eat us. They like the geek geek. Drink a whole bottle. Wake up and repeat. Damn. She took a look. Mixed it with the chill out. Now she says. Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Today we're talking about Keisha Kaylee. <clears throat> um, we're actually talking about God Links. Um, she put up a video. Uh, first of all, she put up a hair video. Um, we were all shocked, obviously, when we saw her do a review of a hair company. But then she said that she had more news. So in a subsequent video, she talked about the fact that um, they reached out to her that the money was very attractive. And she just felt it was something that she didn't want to turn down. So fast forward, she, um, you know, colored the hair as we saw. She also went and um, got it installed and she, you know, did her thing. Well, since then, she said at least three or four other companies have reached out. So, even at the beginning, I was like, huh, this is weird. Because I know she showed some hair from a young lady who sent it to her around the Christmas holidays. And she even mentioned at that time that this is not something that she does. Like, that she does not... Uh, do reviews and things on hair companies being that she has one but then she explained in her next video what actually was going on she is very excited um, and as we all know she just completed her real estate license so with that um, she feels that a lot is required especially time and that's something that she feels that she does not have a lot of so with that being the case, she's just re she said that she's decided to kind of reevaluate. Where am I? Where am I going? I have so many things on my plate. How can I keep up? Now, um, one thing I want to say about her, I like the fact that even though she has a very busy schedule, even though you know she uh, has been a content creator for several years, she's also had her business for several years um she still makes the time and takes the time to you know do cooking to do tutoring with her kids as a matter of fact these things are what take up most of her time and i just like that that she you know doesn't feel she's too big to do this as a matter of fact the young lady over there peach mcintyre mentioned uh, recently that she has a nanny and a housekeeper now the interesting thing I found out about that is she has a nanny and housekeeper but she still always has to have her kids at least in some aspect and um, as far as the housekeeper is concerned um, it seems like the house always dirty I mean it's like make it make sense sis you putting out money to go get a daycare or um, a personal person to come to your house and keep your child when you could just um, put that same effort into finding somewhere for them to go. Ooh, excuse me. As far as a daycare center. And, you know, go from there. So, um, I really feel like... Uh, you know, Keisha definitely invests herself in her successes. Her relationship, which she does talk about, she doesn't show him much because of the past controversy, but she does definitely, definitely talk about him and talk about their relationship and things that they do. And like I said, from time to time, she will show him. So that is definitely a plus. But um, with that being said... Um, a lot of these other mothers should take note of some of these women who have been on the platform about the same amount of time, but their um, subscriber count is just nowhere in comparison. They need to look at the things that a person like Keisha that has a lot going on does. Now, let's go back to talking about her being out of business. I find that interesting. Now, one of the things that she did talk about is the fact that 
uh, there's an issue with her um, marketing. And what she just said is, she's really not marketing. She's relying on her past customers to uh, advocate for her business, which of course, advocacy is definitely a part of the sales funnel. But you still have to feed the funnel. That's the most important part of any business structure is feeding the funnel. People who don't have businesses, people who can't sell, people who um, can't find people to uh, even patronize them, even take a chance or uh, buy a sale product, are people who don't feed the funnel. We usually get about 1%, some even less, um, of sales from the people who come into our sales funnel. So you have to think about that. Let's say a half percent to 1%. Now, depending on your, um, you know, what you sell, it could be as high as 2 or 3%, but I'm just going to say for the sake of this conversation, you get about 1%. So that means if you know that you need to make $2,000 a week, you know how many customers is required at a certain average order value to make that, then you know how many people need to come into your funnel so that you can get that 1% of sales. And it's really that simple. I remember three years ago, you could put up a picture of a pretty product, whether it's hair, whether it's clothing or whatever. You all know that I do have an online sales boutique and so... You can just put up a picture of a product that you're selling and you can make money. It is not like that anymore, baby. What was that they said on um, Players Club? Honey, you can't go in there and just uh, dance for them. Now they want you to twerk. They want you to make it clap and everything. And that's the same thing you got to do to get out there and get that money. Baby, you got to clap. And I'm speaking, obviously... Um, you know, symbolically, but nonetheless, it is very important that you feed your son. So, um, that's the key element to her. If she went, got somebody to run her campaigns, her marketing campaigns for her business, and she had good quality product and good customer service, she'd go back to where she was. As a matter of fact, she probably needs someone to run her store, um, whether she's doing real estate or even just her normal life. Because it seems like she was filling her own orders, and that takes a lot of time. I mean, I'm just now reopening my store, and I don't do my orders. So, like I said, it's very important to market. It's very important to feed the funnel. But what do you guys think? Do you think that she should uh, officially close her doors? Because that's what she's talking about doing. She's talking about actually just for a year. But the thing is, if you're going to walk away... You just need to go on and move to the next phase of your life. Why would you walk away from already made uh, customers that you have? Then they stop buying because you're no longer in business. In a year, baby, they go. Hair is the most unloyal customer base because there are so many people with it, so many types of hair, uh, you know, so many looks. There are so many different people marketing, and I mean, the best look is the latest look. The last thing you fell in love with is the look that is the best, and it's just like that. So tell me what you think, guys. Do you think that she should close her doors? Do you think that she just needs to buckle down and get to work? That's what I think. She needs to sit down. She needs to create a sales team. Her, show, her store, especially when making decent money, should have a sales team. Because a person paying you a couple of thousand dollars to wear a wig, now that's compelling. Especially if you can turn around and make money for them. But heck, if you can do it for them, you can do it for yourself. And when you are the person that is running the business, sweetie, the sales potential is endless. It just is. So guys, tell me what you think. Um, we were talking about her and her business in this video, and I just want your two cents. I will definitely be waiting in the comments to find out what you ladies have to say. And I will see you in the next video. I do want to say this too before I uh, check out. Number one, freaking adorable. Her babies are so sweet and so cute. 
and just amazing. And number two, kudos to Keisha. Um, I do know a lot of people who are unable to pass that test on the first try. So that is compelling. Now, if she's a good student, it could just be a her thing or, you know, it doesn't matter. She did have to put in a lot of work because I even know people in the insurance industry and definitely the mortgage industry that they say that test is a book of air. So the fact that she was able to do it the way that she did is definitely uh, a plus. It's definitely a, an awesome thing and definitely a plus. And kudos to her. Um, and we will talk about the rest in the next video. Bye for now. I fought for 16 passenger. This a G5. No, this not a challenger. Big one. I keep some members with me in the fridge. The coat seats. They some cannibals. Eat us. They like the geek geek. Drink a whole bottle. Wake up and repeat. Damn. She took a look. Mixed it with the chill out. Now she say she's saying 3D. Wow. I go in the jungle and they got a coat. I bet I come out with a meme. I bet I do this shit for the fam. Cause this shit